light, shadow and reflection. Introduction In the daytime, you can see the things of your surroundings irrespective of where you are. You can see the sky, the sun, objects at home, school, playground or vehicles on the road. But if you observe, as the day ends, some of the objects are not visible to you, even you cannot see the sun. You can see the objects in the night only when the electric lights or lamps emit light or the moon except new moon in the sky. In the dark room, nothing is visible to you. It is because there is no light in the room. It is the light which helps you to see the objects around you. Light Light is a kind of energy which gives us the sensation of sight or to see the objects around us. The sun, the largest source of energy on the earth, is also the largest source of light on the earth. In the daytime, we see most of the objects such as vehicles, people, animals, etc. outside our house. While in the closed room, you can see the objects only when there is a source of light, for example, electric light, lamp, etc. Light is essential for life on the earth. Plants produce food in the presence of sunlight. Even when people go to tourist place where the extent of electricity is limited, people burn fossil fuels such as coal, wood to produce heat and light. Furthermore, as we know, the sun is millions of kilometers far from the earth. But still, the sunlight reaches the earth. It means the light travels very fast. According to scientific measures, the speed of light is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second and sunlight takes 8 minute 20 seconds to reach the earth's surface. Luminous and non-luminous objects Those objects which have their own source of energy to emit light are called luminous bodies. Examples are the sun, stars, burning candle, torch, electric lamp, etc. On the other hand, the objects which do not emit light but are visible only when they reflect the light incident on them by the luminous bodies are called non-luminous bodies. Examples are the moon, the earth, books, blackboard, etc. Light rays when fall on an object, the object reflects the light. When these reflected light rays fall on our eyes, we see the object. The moon looks shiny in the sky but is a non-luminous body. It does not emit its own light. The sunlight falls on it and makes it shiny. Path of Light Light travels in a straight line as long as it does not strike with any object in its path. In vacuum, it travels in the straight line at a constant speed of 3 lakh km per second 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second, known as the speed of light. You must have observed in your house that whenever a beam of light enters a dark room through a tiny hole in the door, it seems to be a straight path. Take three CDs. Put them at a distance from each other in such a way that the whole of all the CDs lie in a straight line. Now, take a candle and put it behind the third CD. Make sure that the height of candle is same as the height of the CD hole from the base. Now, burn the candle and see its flames through the holes all together from opposite end. You can easily see the flame. Now, displace one CD from its position such that the whole of all the CDs do not lie in a straight line. Again, see the flames through the holes all together. We can notice that the flame cannot be seen. In case if light travels in a straight path, then the light rays from the flame should strike CD first. Then they should get deflected from their path and comes back to our eyes. In actual, this does not happen. This proves that light travels in a straight line. Ray Ray is a very narrow path of light that shows the direction of travelling of light. It is represented by a straight line with an arrowhead in its one end to show the direction of travelling of light. 
light rays allows us to draw clear ray diagrams showing various phenomenon such as reflection of light, refraction, etc. This method of drawing light rays to illustrate the behavior of light is called ray tracing. Light rays are of many types, but the most common light rays are incident ray. Incident rays are the rays that approach or hit a particular surface or they are said to be incident on the surface. Reflected ray. Reflected rays are the rays that bounce off or reflects from the surface of an angle. Refracted ray. When light propagates through one medium to another, the ray either bends or goes away from its original path. The ray that represents the travelling of light in another medium is called refracted ray. For example, when light travels from air to glass plate, firstly, a ray of light incident on the glass surface, this ray is incident ray. Some part of it reflects from the glass surface to the air known as the reflected ray. As the some part of it enters through the glass plate known as the refracted ray. Beam A light source emits light in different directions. All the rays of light together form a beam of light. The intensity of a beam is higher than that of a ray. Beams of light are of many types. These are parallel beam. When the rays of light are parallel to each other, it is called parallel beam. For example, parallel beam of sunlight incident on solar cooker. Converging beam. When the rays of light coming out from different directions meet at a point, then such rays together form converging beam. Diverging beam. When the rays of light coming out from a point light source, they spread out in different directions. These rays of light together form diverging beam. Transparent, translucent and opaque objects. You can see the objects around you through the glass window of your house. But you cannot see them through the walls. Sometimes you see them partially. The reason behind this is that there are some materials through which light can pass and you can see the objects through them. They are called transparent. For example, glass, glass window, spectacles, etc. Mirrors are also made from transparent materials. Some materials do not allow the light to pass through them and the object is not visible through them. They are called opaque objects. For example, wood, metals, etc. Some materials allow the light to pass through them partially. Unlike transparent objects, light cannot pass through them completely. These objects are known as translucent objects. For example, butter paper, frosted glass, thin sheet of plastic, trace paper, etc. Shadow Shadow is a dark area which blocks the path of light from the light source falling on the object. Ask your friend to stand up in front of the wall in dark room. Now, take a torch and focus it towards the friend. You will see the black image of your friend on the wall. This black image is called the shadow. With the help of this activity, you will observe that shadow of your friend will form only when there is any surface behind him. It means a surface is necessary to form a shadow. Such a surface is known as a screen. You will also observe some conclusions from this activity. The shadow of an object is always formed black in color. It does not depend on the color of the object. The shape and size of the shadow depends on the position of the light source and the shape of the object. No other details except shape of an object are obtained from the shadow. Shadow of an object in sunlight is maximum during sunrise and sunset while minimum in the afternoon. A shadow mainly consists of two parts, umbra and penumbra. Umbra Umbra is the darkest part of the shadow. This is the portion of the shadow directly behind the object. It blocks the light completely. Penumbra Penumbra is the lighter shading portion around the umbra. This is not a true shadow. It starts where the umbra ends. The light shadow gradually reduces outwards the umbra. 
Go to the dark place with your friend. Ask your friend to stand at such a place where there is no object such as tree or building behind him. Now, focus the torchlight on your friend. Here you can see a shadow of your friend. Now, repeat the process with a background. Again, focus the torchlight on your friend. Now, you can see a shadow of your friend on the background. Conditions for the formation of shadow A shadow is formed when an object blocks the light falling on it. There are some essential conditions which must be followed for shadow formation. These conditions are There must be a source of light. There must be an opaque object to obstruct the path of light. An opaque screen on which shadow will form. The number of shadows of an object depends on the number of sources of light from which the light is incident on the object. It means if light is incident on an object from two different light sources, two shadows of the object will be formed. They form opposite to the light source. If light source is in front of the object, shadow will form behind the object. Eclipses As you know, the earth revolves around the sun and the moon revolves around the earth in a fixed orbit. During their motion, simultaneously, the sun, the moon and the earth come along a straight line. Because of this, the light of the sun is obstructed either by the moon or the earth and the sun and the moon respectively seems to be disappeared when seen from the earth. This phenomenon is called eclipse. There are two types of eclipses, solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. Solar eclipse When the sun, the moon and the earth come along a straight line in such a way that moon comes in between the sun and the earth, the light of the sun is obstructed by the moon. The shadow of the moon fall on some portion of the earth and the sun is not visible to us from these portions. This phenomenon is called solar eclipse. During solar eclipse, the dark side of the moon faces the earth. Thus, solar eclipse takes place only on new moon day. There are three types of solar eclipse, partial solar eclipse, annular solar eclipse and total solar eclipse. Partial solar eclipse When the moon does not line up the sun completely, it partially blocks the sunlight to reach the earth. This is called Partial Solar Eclipse Annular Solar Eclipse When the sun and the moon line up completely and either the moon is away from the earth or the earth is closer to the sun, the moon seems apparently smaller in size than the sun and a ring-shaped or annular shining portion of the sun is visible from the earth. This is called Annular Solar Eclipse Full Solar Eclipse when the moon completely obscures the bright light of the sun and no sun is visible from the earth. This is called full solar eclipse. Lunar eclipse When the sun, the moon and the earth come along a straight line in such a way that the earth is in between the sun and the moon, the light of the sun is blocked by the earth. This phenomenon is called lunar eclipse. Thus, the shadow of the earth is formed on the moon and is visible from the earth. When lunar eclipse occurs, the moon appears red in color. There are three types of lunar eclipse, total, partial and penumbral lunar eclipse. Total lunar eclipse Total lunar eclipse occurs when the earth's umbra, central dark portion of its shadow, obscures the moon. Partial lunar eclipse Partial lunar eclipse occurs when the moon does not completely obscure by the Earth's umbra, it remains partially visible from the Earth. Penumbral lunar eclipse When the moon travels through the penumbral part of the Earth's shadow, penumbral lunar eclipse occurs. Pinhole camera As you know that a camera is used to capture pictures, lenses are used in the camera. Pinhole camera is a simple camera without a lens but with a tiny pinhole. It is a rectangular box with a pinhole at the centre of one of its face and the opposite face has a piece of trace paper. Light from the object passes through the pinhole 
and make an inverted image of the object on the trace paper in the box. How to make a pinhole camera? Requirements Black cardboard paper Trace paper Tape Pin Construction The method of construction of pinhole camera is shown step by step. Step 1. Take two black cardboard paper. Fold one of them to make a cylindrical shape and fix its edge with tape to make tube. Again, fold another paper to make cylindrical shape in such a way that it can slide inside and touch the inner surface of big tube. Step 2. Cover one end of big tube with black cardboard paper and make a small pinhole at its center with the help of pin. Step 3. Take the piece of tracing paper and cover one end of small tube with it. Step 4. Insert the covered end of small tube into the open end of big tube. Pinhole camera is ready to use. Working. Place a glass in a lightened area. Take the pinhole camera and place it in such a way that its pinhole side is towards the glass. Hold the small tube and see the glass from its open side through the trace paper. You see an inverted image of the glass on the trace paper. You can slowly slide the small tube into the big tube to see small and larger images of the glass. The color of the image will be same as that of the original object. You can see all the objects, even the sun, with this camera. But make sure that the object that you want to see must be placed in the bright light. In this way, you can make your own camera without making lens and see all the objects in it. Mirror and image When you dress up or comb your hair to go to school, you see yourself in the mirror to see whether you are perfectly dressed or not. Mirror is a reflected surface made up of glass coated with silver or amalgam metal on its backside. When the light rays from an object incident on the mirror, it reflects the light and forms a clear image of the object in it. Image is defined as that point where all the light rays converge and form a duplicate picture of the object.